you're welcome. And uh, first of all, thanks for having us and me and my colleague here. Um, we will talk about the, our challenges and, 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 and problems we face on a, uh, on a daily base, uh, being a game developer as well as a game publisher. And uh, we are here more as a game publisher today. Um, and um, what we will tell is only the truth, and we can by far cover everything uh, of our problems. Uh, first of all, Soft Games is uh, a leading developer of the most popular Facebook instant games. Uh, <laughs> uh, thanks to, to Chris for the awesome platform. Um, but we operate uh, one of the world's largest platform for HTML5 games as well. So we have two aspects uh, usually. And uh, our vision is to help players um, play instantly with their friends and help brands finding their target audience for, for advertisement for sure. Um, uh, I'm Christian, I'm the CTO of Soft Games, and I will tell something about the technical uh, stuff. Uh, first of all, we've heard this already, uh, it's the loading problem, uh, load, loading the games, and, and the graph is uh, pretty simple, and every, everybody knows this uh, when it comes to monetization or retention, and then you have to quickly load the game, and Chris mentioned this already, uh, they, the users drop off quite quickly. Um, even though they, they, they should know that you need time to load all the assets and, and even the, the game code. Um, our goal is for the platform to deliver the first bytes within 500 milliseconds uh, and uh, get the users into a game within three seconds, uh, which is uh, quite challenging. Um, it's, it sounds so easy, but it's, it's quite hard to get there. Um, usually, you know, a casual game developer, and we are ca casual game developers, intend to load everything up front because it's easy and then they do not have to think about um, background loading things and stuff like this. Uh, so it's hard to achieve these, uh, these three seconds, um, especially when, when games come more and more valuable. There's much more uh, mechanics, uh, meta games and stuff like this, even better graphics and, and sounds and so on. So this is one of the, the issues we have. Um, um, the loading and storage uh, <laughs> leads into the, the, the thing that we try to prepare the game for an offline play, you know, uh, which is um, one of the key um, yeah, uh, things for, for native games. When you, once you load a, a native game onto your mobile phone, then you can play it everywhere, uh, where a web game is not so e easy, I would say. We played a bit uh, with this. Um, um, but there's always the, the conflict between fast loading and a good game and, and fast loading and uh, offline preparation. And, uh, and um, yeah. What about the games with uh, monetization and the game backend? How do you pre present this for, for offline play? You know, this is an issue. But I, but I very much like the, the thing Google did for, for the search engine just to pr provide a mini game keep the users on the site, and, and that's, that's maybe a good idea as well. Uh, in the afternoon, there will be a session about loading uh, and storage for large assets, so I will definitely attend this um, to see what, what we can do uh, for us. Um, yeah, uh, but when, when we have offline play, we have finally the, uh, the problem that we make it very, very easier to, 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 to steal the game. Uh, and uh, for us, so far, there's no way to, to protect our games in the web. Uh, we tried with minification, obfuscation for sure. This is standard for our development or, and, and publishing process. But, um, <clears throat> um, you know, there's the tools for, for make them the, the code beautif <laughs> beautiful again and deobfuscated. And even soft games works on obfuscated code whenever it comes to uh, to maintenance or to policy problems on our older games, where we only have the the, the obfuscated code <laughs> anymore. And uh, one of the ideas we've had back then was a so-called runtime code, where we deliver a piece of code just just during runtime through WebSockets or something like this. But uh, what about the offline play then? Then we have another problem. So um, basically. Uh, for now, we gave up, as there is no, no, not really a chance. I would wish there would be. Um, once you get your user playing your game with a nice user experience and so on, um, maybe stealing your game as well, 
uh, there is this issue with multiple devices. Everybody of us has multiple devices, and um, we played with the idea to, you know, to fingerprint the user to uh, actually fingerprint the user uh, and, and combine it maybe with the IP address. But already in the mobile world, um, the, the mobile devices share IP addresses, and you get. You know, there's no, there's no wait for for a hundred percent hit rate, and everything below hundred percent is un insufficient, insufficient. Um, so this this aspect, uh, and you know, you get your user, but uh, we want to get millions of users, and then it comes to the problem of discovery, and here is where my colleague Gilly, our uh, Toronto studio lead, uh, will take over and tell you something about these aspects. Is it working? Yeah. Thanks. Thank you, Christian, for um, walking us through some of the technical challenges. And I will try to actually focus a little bit more on the product and the UX challenges that we are facing. Discovery is definitely one of the key uh, the, uh, challenges. And, and soft games in the past actually had the choice of going into the direction of the App Store, Play Store, or to the web game. And we decided to go to the web games. We thought, actually, this would be easier for us in terms of discovery. But boy, we were wrong. There's tons of games right now on web, and there's no centralized place to reach these games. So it's actually becoming a, a really significant challenge to actually push traffic into these games. There are some attempts to solve that. Facebook Instant Games is definitely one of our ways to deal with that. But this will continue to be a challenge for us moving forward in the future. Um, but it's not only the challenge of getting the player to play the game for the first time. It's really a challenge also about getting the player to play a game he liked again, the retention. And there are some mechanics that we know are existing in native games, push notifications, for example. So push notifications are something that we can do with web, but we see that the opt-in rate on web is much, much lower. So the opt-in rate on iOS, for example, is much higher than the web, and we think this has to do with the opt-in rate user experience itself, the opt-in rate, sorry. Yeah, slow down. To slow down. Sorry, okay. So as I said, um, notification, push notification, and the ability to actually engage our users, send them a notification, and get them back to the game. So this is something that we would like to have, and the user experience right now of the opt-in, the moment where the user accepts um, um, that he's willing to get this push notification, is something that we think right now is not solved the best way in terms of the user experience. So it's not standardized, of course, different browsers, different solutions. But it's also, in some cases, the user can completely ignore that. He might not be aware that he can opt into these kind of things. We actually think Andro Android Chrome solved that better. And maybe this is a way to move forward in going in that direction where the user has to uh, uh, acknowledge the allow or block. So another thing is shortcuts and bookmarks. Again, having a, a specific, simple way, entry point into the game. So again, there's a lot of ways to do that these days. But none of them are standardized. And we think a lot of less tech-savvy users might not even be aware that they can actually add to the home screen shortcut or, or bookmarks. So having, again, some kind of an opportunity here for us to uh, show something like the bot opt uh, sorry, the notification opt-in um, would be a good thing for us and also for the, for the user to immediately get this uh, shortcut on his screen and be able to enter the game consistently. Just for your information, again, on Facebook Instant Games, we are able to show this, uh, uh, to create these shortcuts on Android, for example. And we see by far that users are entering through this shortcut. Their retention is significantly higher than all other users, right? So this is a very important element for us. And of course, monetization. Um, we will all like to do, uh, to create games just for fun, but we are here also to make money. And right now, uh, with, uh, with native games, the simplicity and the immediacy of in-app purchases is driving $60 billion um, um, dollars revenue on a yearly basis. This is a dream for us to achieve the same thing on, on web games. And this is not only about the in-app purchase, it's also about rewarded ads. So in the future, um, using maybe the payment request API, making it a standard thing, making the experience there something that users are um, seeing all the time that they are trusting this kind of, uh, this kind of uh, uh, feature and that they are doing that the same way they are doing it on native, that would be excellent. But also having some kind of a solid solution for rewarded ads, that would be amazing as well. So that's a huge opportunity to make a lot of 
money. And if we make money, we make better games. If we make better games, the users are happy. It's very clear that this needs to be um, combined. So um, that's basically a summary of our major issues, the major challenges that we are facing. It's not everything, as Christian said, but we are very happy to be here. Thank, for, thank you for the opportunity and looking forward to actually tackle some of these uh, things during these uh, workshops. Thank you very much.